Okay, so it is Monday afternoon, taking a quick second during my lunch break to wrap up the last vlog, start this vlog, and yeah, so let's just jump right in. I am physically reading lore, and I'm not a ton farther into this, so I still have quite a bit to go of this. And I also, I forgot to mention as I was wrapping up the vlog, my last vlog just now, but I also actually have checked out the water knife from the library. Checked it out through Libby, but I'm actually reading it via Kindle. And so I've read just a little bit of this. This is a climate fiction that follows a very, very water, <laughs> where water is very, very scarce, I guess I should say, future United States water is scarce we're following the western part of the united states where it's particularly bad you're following a few different perspectives who are connected to water in some way there's an immigrant family there is a reporter and you also follow someone a lawyer who works for someone who is very powerful in terms of real estate i think and this lawyer is trying to make sure that the person the woman that he works for who is this real estate well i'm not sure if it's commercial, residential, whatever, but make sure that she has access to the water that she needs for her properties and, you know, everyone else be damned. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, and there's, you know, basically it's just kind of the fight for water. There's an actual death. And so I think the story is going to center around this death and how that brings all of these perspectives together in the fight for water. So I've started that. We'll probably continue on with that along with lore. And I'm also listening to the audiobook of how to avoid or avert a climate disaster. This is Bill Gates's recent book on climate change. And I talked at the end of last week's vlog about why I'm loving this so much so far. And, you know, I will continue to do so once I finish it to see if I have the same thoughts and feelings. But I'm really, really enjoying it so far. I think he's doing a really good job just kind of trying to focus the conversation on what he feels are the super critical conversations we need to have, kind of cut through the noise. Uh, here's where we need to focus. Here's Here are the sources of carbon emissions Here and the kind of the sectors we need to tackle. Here are the technologies that we have. Here's what we need in order to get to zero emissions, and that's what we need to focus on. And you know, I think it's super compelling and interesting so far. He definitely acknowledges that he has a very privileged and limited perspective on this, but he's has been able to talk to so many experts and so many different voices that he's trying to make sure he's bringing all of these in while acknowledging his limited perspective, um, but still feels that he has to do what he can to use his voice to work on climate change. Anyway, super interesting so far, so I'm continuing to listen to that. My next audiobook will probably be Blackfish City, but we'll see. So yeah, that is the start of this week's reading vlog, and I will check in once more reading has occurred. <laughs> so it is Saturday late morning, early afternoon. There's a lot to catch up. So I did, so I'll start with the ebooks, audiobooks, and then move on to physical stuff. So I did finish How to Avoid a Climate Disaster by Bill Gates and listen to this one on audio. As I mentioned, Will Wheaton narrates. I don't know if I mentioned it in the first clip of this vlog or the last one wrapping up my other vlog, but Will Wheaton narrates, which is always just a delight. I love his narration. So it's really great to have Will Wheaton narrate this. I really do look forward to getting a physical copy and actually being able to mark some key sections and just kind of his key takeaways. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed this. I really, really did. I don't think it would be the first book that I would hand someone if they just said, I want to know about this climate change situation. What should I read? This wouldn't be the first thing that I would hand them. Uh, he doesn't really go too much into detail about the science of climate change. Uh, he's coming from a very particular perspective and talking about a very particular message. It's a short book. He's not trying to be comprehensive. So again, he doesn't go much into the background. He doesn't go much into the science. He kind of, he gives a little bit and then really just kind of jumps right in and says, here's where we are at emissions. We need to be at zero. And here are the key sectors 
and kind of breaks down his thinking about the key sectors that we need to focus on. He also, I think one of the interesting sections was him talking about the kinds of questions that he asks when he's having conversations with experts about climate change to really kind of break it down and understand, you know, if they say we can cut, we can cut X amount of emissions if we do this particular action. It's kind of a series of questions that he asked to really put that into context and understand what that means for the overall picture of getting to zero emissions, which I thought was really interesting. And he then kind of breaks it down by kind of key, he then breaks it down by key sources of emissions or key ways that emissions happen, uh, you know, tr moving things around, building things, he, he breaks it down and talks about the key breakthroughs that have happened in each of those areas and he talks about them in descending order of the amount that those, what percent emissions are associated with that particular action activity sector and goes in descending order. And uh, so I thought that was a really interesting and helpful way to break it down and think about it. And he just talks about what key innovations have happened in those sectors up to this point and what really needs to happen. And I think he did a really good job trying to bring in a bunch of different perspectives, use his, I guess, unique perspective and uh, the way he's been able to use his privilege, and he, again, very much acknowledges that from the beginning, that he is just some rich white guy, uh, but that he's he's trying to do what he can and has used his privilege to at least be able to talk to a bunch of people. And uh, I mean, if he's going to just be some random rich white guy with an opinion, that doesn't, you know, necessitate that he speak his opinion or be able to voice his opinion or have one if he's not an expert, but he at least acknowledges that he has tried to use his privilege to acquire an informed opinion, uh, <laughs> which is always appreciated, and, um, you know, kind of break it down. He's very much coming from an innovation technology perspective, but I do think he really does a good job of trying to think about a holistic picture and emphasizes that it's going to take a lot of work, it's going to take a lot of money, it's going to take a lot of trial and error in some cases, and that we need to not be afraid to make mistakes and have things, some technologies not work out because we just have to put everything we can behind it right now. Um, anyway, I, I overall really, really liked this um, and think that what he was trying to do, he did pretty successfully. I then started to listen to Blackfish City and ultimately decided, so it's not a permanent DNF for either of these, but I decided to just kind of set aside both Blackfish City and I had checked out on an ebook from my library, The Water Knife. I have both of these in physical copies, in physical form, back in my apartment in Arlington. And I just, it's not that I think I, I won't enjoy either one. It's not like I listened to a certain amount and really just felt like the stories weren't for me. I didn't get very far in either and I just realized that that was not what I was in the mood to read right now and I wasn't being drawn in and I don't think it was the stories. I think I could be drawn into these stories, I just don't think I will be at this moment and I need to try to listen to that and let myself, you know, set stories aside for a moment if I think that's what's going to be best for me, potentially enjoying them when I want to read them. And so I returned I returned the water knife and stopped listening to Blackfish City just for now and I just needed something that I was just gonna get sucked into and just I needed something to engage me. I needed something just fun and engaging that was really just gonna grip me and I ultimately decided to listen to The Boyfriend Project by Alexis Hall and this was the perfect choice. This was the perfect choice. This is what I was in the mood for. It really was calling to me, I uh, had the audiobook, and so, and I just, I really felt like this was going to be a fun one to listen to on audio, and indeed it was, and I was immediately hooked. I was immediately so hooked, <laughs> and I absolutely ended up adoring the audiobook. The narrator is great. I didn't like the way he did female voices in this story, but overall I really, really loved the narrator. What's the story about? Glad you asked. So we follow Luke, who is not really in the best place in his life. He is the son of a couple of famous musicians. His father in particular is a famous musician who abandoned him when he was a small child for the sake of his career. 
and he's he's just not really in the best place and he a work situation happens and he needs to kind of get a put together boyfriend or be seen with a put together boyfriend in order to have a better image for his work and yeah, the person that his friends suggest is someone that he's met before and that's Oliver and Oliver seems to be all put together and they seem to be two very different people and they are two very different people and you know they don't think they're gonna hit it off they don't hit it off at first but they still uh, there's a reason why Oliver might also want to have a fake boyfriend and so it's very clear like they're very explicit about it up front they're gonna be fake boyfriends for a while they're going to attend this work event and kind of get some of this work situation for Luke fixed there's some family things going on for Oliver so you know they both really need need a fake relationship and so they they start to fake date and of course you know things get complicated and they actually start to really like each other blah 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 uh, so it's it's kind of similar tropes like it's definitely a different story but it is similar tropes it's a very similar humor style to red white and royal blue so if you really enjoyed red white and royal blue i i really think you might have a, a fun time with this one as well uh, it's also kind of a same the same level of steam as red white and royal blue there are explicit scenes but it's more about how they feel during that than anything else um anyway so i feel like if you like that one you're really gonna like boyfriend material. I had such a fun time. This was so addicting. I listened to it super quickly. I could not stop listening. I had such a good time with it. <laughs> such a good time. And that was just what I needed in this moment. I think that was just the perfect choice. I also have been reading more in Lore by Alexandra Bracken. I'm about halfway through at this point. And it's kind of hard to see this, but um, I'm about halfway through at this point. And this one isn't sucking me in or kind of pulling me in as much as I want it to at the moment but there are some interesting things going on I'm having a good enough time following these characters and what's going on uh, but I will talk a little bit more about that one later once I read a bit more of it I then so in my TBR I will link that below I talked about what I might want to do to kind of change some things up on my channel and I think I think the first thing I want to do for that, this might be my last weekly reading vlog and I might decide to use the fact that I have started The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I'm actually listening to the audiobooks for these, but I might use this as kind of my first separate reading vlog. I might just have a full vlog dedicated to me binging uh, The Lord of the Rings series and The Hobbit and so so I don't know if I want to talk too much about The Hobbit on this vlog because I, I think this is where I want to start having just separate, not necessarily weekly reading vlogs, but just themed or some reading vlogs that will tell you more about what I'm actually reading from the title of the vlog than just a random weekly reading vlog. And so I might start that with this. We'll see. But I'm, I'm 90 pages in. It is an absolute freaking delight. As I said, I'm listening to the audiobooks and Rob Inglis is a genius narrator and I would highly recommend if you love audiobooks. These are probably going to end up being some of my favorite audiobooks I listened to this year. So I'm very pumped to listen to them on audio. My parents have physical copies of the first two. I don't know where their copies of The Two Towers and Return of the King have gone, but uh, it's fine. So that is what is going on with my reading so far. So for the weekend, I'm going to physically continue reading more of lore. And I think I will just end the vlog maybe when I finish lore. And that'll be kind of the last thing that I talk about. And then I will just have a separate thing where I start talking about The Hobbit. That's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Uh, just because that's, I don't know, just feeling like a little change, a little shift, and I think that could be a fun direction to go. So anyway, yeah, I will check in later. And good morning it is, about a week later, it's Friday, March 12th, and yeah, so I'm gonna wrap up this, what turned out to be almost a two-week reading vlog, and I mentioned why in my last clip, and so I wanted to go ahead and finish a weekly reading vlog after reading Lore by Alexandra Bracken. So I just 
I had resolved to basically just end this vlog whenever I finished this book. And then the only other thing I've been reading recently is The Hobbit and The Fellowship of the Ring, which will be a separate vlog. So there's not going to be anything else at the moment. Um, so I figured it would be a good place to just cut off this vlog and then go into the next one with me binging The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. So anyway, so I'm here to wrap up this vlog after finishing Lore by Alexander Bracken, as I mentioned. This one was not my favorite fairy loot, which is a shame because the artwork on it is really cool. The spine is absolutely gorgeous, and I love the design on it. And they also have a cool quote on the side. Um, so it's a shame that it was not my favorite because I really don't want to keep books that I'm not going to reread. And I don't think I'm going to reread this one. But anyway, so this one, as I probably mentioned, I don't know how much of a synopsis I gave in previous clips, but this one follows a, a modern day New York where the gods every seven years, it's like some of the gods basically become mortals and there are hunters. And so there are different families basically of gods or descendants of gods that go into this hunt every seven years for a period of seven days where it's just everyone attacks everyone <laughs> and if you kill you know if you kill a god with certain powers in a certain way then you uh, you might be able to actually get their powers anyway so it's just kind of a bloodbath for seven days it's actually a pretty interesting concept and could be really cool but I don't I, I don't know, it just, this book didn't click with me. Um, personally, I just never really got invested. I was never really into the story. I was never super compelled to pick it up. Um, yeah, just never really pulled in, I guess. It, it definitely felt pretty slow, except right at the very end, but overall it was seemed pretty slow throughout most of the book. And the characters just didn't seem super dynamic or memorable or three-dimensional to me um, and it, it just the plot just kind of sometimes seemed to meander a little bit um, which I, I think contributed to the slow feeling pace and there were definitely some plot points that I just didn't understand the purpose of. <laughs> there were a couple of things I think that could have been better explained as far as the situation with this seven day period, the Agon, but uh, that's a separate thing. Um, there definitely were also some conveniences for sure, which happens in every book, but uh, the same, like it's healing. I think there are some conveniences around characters being able to be healed that just kept happening and I was like, okay. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, just not, not my favorite. I do think I do think if there were an adaptation of this that could make some changes, I like the concept is so cool though, and I think this would be really cool visually. I, I think this could be really cool adapted as a movie or a TV, like a TV mini series or something. I, I think that could be pretty cool, and I would be interested in watching that if that were ever made. But as a book, I don't think I'm gonna reread it. Uh, but hopefully someone else will be able to enjoy it a bit more once I'm able to donate it. But that is the end of this reading vlog. <laughs> and it's been, as I said, it's been some time since I last checked in on this one, even though it was just one additional book for the purposes of this vlog. So, you know, it's been a minute since I read some of the stuff at the beginning, uh, but I, I I do know there were some books that I ultimately decided to come back to later uh, and then just decided to jump in and read something that I was super excited to read and absolutely love boyfriend material and just kind of listen to myself as far as just reading what I wanted to read in the moment and not forcing myself to read something that I wasn't excited to read, which is something that I need to do more of. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, and even if there aren't weekly vlogs, there will of course be vlogs, it'll just be a little bit different in terms of uh, how I structure some of the videos that I do. But there will still be vlogs, there will still be TBR-like videos where 
I describe some of the plans that I have coming up or maybe even add some chance into the mix there and then just do recent reads to talk about a certain number of books that I've read recently and capture some of the stuff in vlogs or anything that I've read outside of stuff that I'm reading for vlogs. So it'll still also be talking about all of the books that I read. It'll just be a little bit different. So anyway, again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more bookish content. And I will leave my Twitter and Instagram link down below. That's where I like to hang out. I will also leave more resources for how you can support the Black Lives Matter movement. And I will see you later. Bye.